How is it going, boys and girls? Welcome back to Key West Waterman. My name is Aaron Young. One of those days where I don't really have much of an agenda. It's actually beautiful out. There's not a whole lot of wind. And the little boat is in the water. We did a sunset run last night. And the further we get into winter, we're in the uh, middle of November right now, I think. November 15th or 16th, something like that. Um, the deeper we get into November, the more my days on the Ginu are numbered. So I've got some stuff I have to do this afternoon around noon or one. But it looks pretty darn calm out there right now. So I think I'm going to put my dive here together and hop on the little boat. Figured I'd bring you along. Pearl. See what we can get into. So this is one of those places that I found on accident. Um, I mean, if you were to pull up right here and kind of look at it, you would just assume that this was the end. There's really not a lot of options on places to go. So I did bring a gun with me. This is my little shorty gun I built years and years ago. The water's a little murky, um, so that this will actually be perfect. And again, I don't really have much of an agenda today. Just kind of swim around. I've never actually brought you guys here. I've actually never brought a human to this spot. I've only been here by myself. Um, but for the name of, or in the name of safety, Madeline knows where I am. She has access to my my phone, so she can locate me if something were to go wrong. But let's hop in, take a peek. So I actually get questions all the time um, on what it is I use to film my episodes. You're watching right now on a GoPro 8. I have two other GoPro 8s that I use for diving, and I actually just picked up this uh, Action 3 from DJI. Will talked me into that, but um, all of my episodes are filmed on these eights. They do just fine. We are low budget here. I'm actually, for the first time, I'm going to try this Action 3 today. I wish I had an 11 to compare it to, but I don't. But I'm going to put the Action 3 
on the spear gun mount, and I'll have an eight on my head mount. So we'll give that a go. Water's kind of murky, so I'm curious to see if we can see anything anyways. So the water temp's high 70s, but I get cold really easily, so I'm wearing a suit. And honestly, I like to wear a suit year round in the mangroves because there's a lot of stuff that can sting and scrape you. You come out of here looking like a Christmas tree if you're not careful. Oh, what a cherry. Welcome back underwater, everybody. I do appreciate you tuning in. Share my thoughts on a couple of things. There's not a ton of action here, but some some cool stuff to look at. It was pretty odd this day. It's normally not this murky. Normally the water is really clear back here, but we've had some wind. And you can see there's this kind of film on the water that the lens kept grabbing. I'll definitely have to come back when it clears up and show you around, but I know from the outside looking in, you kind of have a, a picture you paint in your head of where you think I am, what's around me. So down here, there are hundreds and hundreds of mangrove islands, and most of them have little channels that run through them. Um, so I'm, I'm deep in a mangrove island, and I would almost call this more of a creek. The water does run through it with the tide, but it's for the most part, it's really shallow the entire way. I mean, you can see I'm only in two feet of water, kind of bouncing across the bottom. And um, I've never seen another person back here. These places are really special because of that, I think. They're really hard to get to um, if you don't know where it's at. Like, you would, you could never in a million years find this just on speculation. But after you get through the, some shallow spots, there's a bunch of little deep pools like this where you can see it gets, I don't know, six, seven feet and... There's these big massive schools of tarpon, sometimes snook. Um, I've seen big jacks and stuff in there. And um, it really is just a special place. And I, I don't show you on a lot of these videos how I get to these locations just because I don't want to ruin it. I know I'm back here, I don't really want to use the word disturbing, observing the wildlife. But if I show you how to get to some of these areas, there's going to be people there constantly. And it'll kind of ruin the magic of it. You can just see there's just tarpon everywhere. I quite honestly I could just swim around out here for hours and a lot of times I do. You can see looking at all these tarpon and they all kind of get behind me and I turn around and they're just curious, they're all following me. It's pretty funny. <laughs> Wondering what the heck I'm doing. But this particular creek is kind of one of a kind in the sense that it's really, really long and I've never actually reached the end of it. I just get to a point where I'm don't want to go any further away from the boat because I don't want to get too far away. And I turn around, so I, I have to guess this thing is probably a couple miles long. You'll see there's a little snook to the right. You can see a ton of those down here. You see them here and there. We can't spear them here. I know some countries they can spear them. And this is just a clip. I'm just picking up the leaves. And it just, it reminds me how remote this is. Like it's never disturbed. I'm, I stick my arm up into my shoulder and it's the same thing. It's just leaves piled up over the years and years. 
from the currents running through. Just really is a cool place. And this is another one of those deeper pools. You'll go for, I don't know, a quarter of a mile, it'll be real shallow, one or two feet, and then you'll run into these deep pools. And I haven't dove this since before the hurricane, and this is one of the deeper pools, and it actually has uh, a newly fallen tree on it within the last few months uh, that I had never seen before. And you can see just kind of doing a quick drop, there are fish everywhere, tons of snappers, most of them are small. But just the amount of life it's holding makes me think that there's going to be something else here. So I do a little bit of investigation. So this is my, we'll call it a drop. I'm in seven feet of water. This is my second drop coming around the back side of it back toward the front. Um, and I was secretly hoping to see a sheep's head and I, uh, I was pretty surprised that I did. And you can see this fish doesn't see a lot of people. It really wasn't concerned with me and I could have taken a shot right there, but I want to wait until that fish turns broadside. That way I don't run the risk of running that shaft down the fillet. Because I'm eating this fish, I want everything to be as intact as possible and a shaft down that fillet will kind of won't ruin it but it's not ideal for me and we have some areas or i have some areas down here that i see a lot of these rock piles and ledges uh, that i'll see these sheep's head on but there's a couple of spots in these mangroves where i see i'll see actually big schools of them and um i've never had my camera on me or a gun with me when i did see them and uh, this was the first time i did i thought it was pretty cool this was actually a really nice one for the lower keys the ones that we do see are 12 to 14 inches uh, and this was actually a really nice fish I was pretty stoked and this is actually a shot from the DJI camera um, the, the image quality was really good but you can see it has these rings that the sunlight reflects from the dive housing and I don't know I, I spoke with them they're gonna send me a new housing so hopefully it'll fix it but um, I will report back on that but I did want to do one more drop. You know me, I'm just curious. I like to look at stuff. And you can see all that commotion brought a little Goliath grouper in. And uh, actually a nice Kubera came in as well. But I had a sheep's head that was big enough. I didn't need any more fish. Always cool to see those guys in the shallow water though. was pretty neat I don't shoot a lot of these down here this is a, a sheep's head if you're not familiar not that the numbers are bad they're just not as prevalent in this area as uh, the mainland of Florida and they even go they make their way pretty far north from my understanding but they are great table fare this is a beautiful one I don't think I need more than that Almost 18 and a half inches. Wow, that's a good one for good one for my standards. Um, the spot's not normally this dirty. I'll have to bring you guys back when it clears up and show you it in all of its glory. The water was really dirty, but I'm actually glad I brought this gun. This is the only gun I brought. I may have had trouble with a bigger gun. Um, we'll see how this new camera did. And I thought about making a few of these the banana guns have been so popular i just I, I really can't believe how many of you guys have purchased banana guns and i can't thank you enough for all the support um, but if you're interested i thought about doing maybe a small run of these low viz kind of uh mangrove gun this is actually the first spear gun i ever built it's probably 14 years old now maybe 13 14 but if you're interested maybe leave a comment maybe we'll make a few of them
but I think I've got enough for dinner. That's a great fish. We'll head back and get this thing cleaned up. Who's here? I got a fish. Mr. Tuna shows up. So I'll be honest, it's been a while since I've filleted a sheep's head. We don't get a ton of them down here. Certain areas, if you know where to look, if you want to target them, you can find them, but definitely not an everyday target. Fairly bony fish as far as the ribs and such go, but beautiful, nice white meat. There you are. Honestly, most people wouldn't be able to tell the difference between a sheep's head and a snapper. Um, great to eat. I can't remember if Madeline has ever tried it, so maybe, maybe I'll just cook it straightforward and let her try it and give us a an honest review. But we'll see you in the kitchen. So I got wrapped up last night and um, just kind of got sidetracked, honestly, and didn't end up filming dinner or didn't end up making dinner with the fish. We woke up this morning, kind of have a busy day today. Um, so what we're having, got some blackened sheep's head uh, with some roasted corn, green onions, and over smoked Gouda grits. And like I said, if you haven't had sheep's head, it's nice, white, flaky. Malin's first time having it. What do you think? It's good. It's kind of like a mixture between um, hogfish and snapper. It's a little bit meanier than hogfish, but it's a good flavor. Well, there you are. First time trying sheep's head. And um, 
we didn't cover the recipe, but we've done this before in an episode. So if you're interested in seeing it, I'll put that on the, I'll put that episode on the up, up next screen. Just didn't feel like filming the recipe this morning, but other than that, that's all we've got. Hope you enjoyed it. Any questions, leave them in the comments as always. And we'll see you on the next one. Later.